So I want to take a few minutes and talk about some little tricks of the programming trade that will show that will go a long way for you to kind of understand a couple of things. Um, and that's like how because we've learned about these bits and timers and counters and and seal ins. But the question is, a lot of the times it's been dependent on some operator pushing a button and then it goes. Well, we don't always have that luxury. Uh, sometimes we want to push a button, let it keep going back and forth, like you know, a thousand times, or or maybe we have an automatic and, and a, a manual. So what I'm just going to discuss is some, and I've already kind of created the program. So if you're looking to see how I've done it, don't you know? This is more of a hey, when you're programming, here's some things to keep in mind. If I want a reciprocating setup, or just a simple, or basically hit a button and do a cycle of a couple of different things. A lot of this could be expanded upon, or some of it could be, you know, but this is just a base level setup. You could easily simplify a lot of this, but let's talk about what we have going on. The idea here is say I have a, say I have a cylinder, I hit a button, it goes out, hits a limit switch, and then it retracts. So maybe it's like a, a, a punch or a press. So it's like, so I, I hit a button, cylinder extends, limit switch, comes back, hits the other limit switch, and that's it. I have to hit the button again, extend, limit switch, retract. Hit, shh, shh. That's the idea, but every time I have to hit a button. Um, and if you just take a look at what's on the screen, I have my little stop button right here, and that's in line with everything else. And then I have a start push button, okay? But here's the important thing. Here's my seal in, so we've done this before, but remember, when before my cylinder retracts, it's hitting a retracted uh, extends. It's hitting a retracted limit switch. And if I want my cycle to always start in the same position every single time, I then need to put things inside my seal in so that when the initial conditions are met, this happens. Okay. So think of think of the think of this as for my starting process. Anything in the CLN will be my initial conditions. And don't make fun of my spelling. Okay. So if I had a limit switch back and it had a proximity sensor that had to detect a part or something along that lines or maybe another safety or whatever have you, I would put all those into there. Because then the moment I hit that push button, it's going to go off that limit switch, and this will drop out to false. But what cuts it off, like just like our garage door, is the is the the activation of the other limit switch. And this is assuming all my limit switches are wired normally open. Okay, so this is my initial condition, and this will be everything in series here. What stops it? stops it and so this is a format that you can use start get, getting you to think about so now I have my little stop button engaged if I and if I and I'm just going to toggle hit start you can see it extends the solenoid and as it comes off it's going to go off this limit switch is still running so it's extending 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 until it hits the end of travel and now what, watch what happens. And by the way, I'm simulating this memory bits because I don't have enough hardware and this way I can control the operation a little bit easier. So don't freak out if things are going for a while. But right now it's not extended. But once it hits that extended limit switch, okay, it's, now, it's gonna drop that out there and then engage the retraction solenoid. So I'm, in, I'm assuming it's like a 5-3 valve you know, or a 5-2 valve, for instance. Uh, not 5-3, a 5-3, but a 5-2. So I extend, retract. It could be a 3 because of the solenoid. So, but that's fluid power class. Um, there, it's extending the solenoid, so it activates that over. And then once it hits that limit switch, it's going to activate it back and allow that cylinder to retract back. So watch what happens when I toggle this bit. This seal's on, and it goes off that limit switch. You know, so it's retracting, 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 and then I toggle, and boom. 
Okay? Everything's hunky dory. So let me erase the drawings. And so we're back to normal. So I can toggle the bit. Whoops. Toggle the bit. Extend, extend, extend. Re you know, boom. Retract, retract, retract. Boom. And then vice versa. I didn't turn off my start button because someone fell asleep and holding it open. Okay. But this is the uh, this is the idea of it. Okay. But right now, let's just say someone hits the stop button, and now we're in limbo because it's not extended or retracted. But say someone was uh, trying to do a fancy trick for his buddy, accidentally hits the stop button. Now the cylinder is in limbo. If I hit the start button, well, it's not retracted, so it won't go. But it's also not extended, so it's not going to retract. That's what this is set up to do. It's basically become a, a home jog, for instance. So now, if I re undo, you know, I kind of pull out the push button, now I can push my home button, and it's going to retract it. I can, it's retracting back. Now it's not a seal in because it's a hold hold on button so and then until it finally gets to the retract and then it will stop but this is a way of jogging something back and usually if i'm using a jog feature i will isolate everything around my automatic as a bypass so right here this is this is the this is something for a jog jog or a manual mode you might hear it called. And you'll see it bypasses everything I need for automatic cy cycling. These are because this is an OR. So either this, an automatic, or I press my push button. And now notice though, in order to keep this from going and this from going at the same time, I have some way that will quote unquote interlock one way or the other. So if, if I press the button, it's always going to home out, and then it'll disengage the seal in. So that this will override and control. So that doesn't just always take off manually on me, okay? So keep that in mind. Well, there's a couple other. So this is a simple just out and back, you know, single cycle, hit a push button every time. Well, what happens if? What happens if we want to have it hit a start button once and then keep going? Well, that's what this program is set up to do. Okay? So I have my stop button right here, and I have my initial conditions. But we've done one big difference, and that is we've included a start condition bit. This will allow me to say once initial conditions have been met, once, do a cycle and keep repeating it. So this is, you know, and I see I'm for initial condi conditions, I see met once. And now, once those are met, then I go keep powering my cycle. And if you notice, I have my, my, my limit switch is retracted. My extend is not retracted. But this isn't going because it's not started. The benefit of this, too, is, is notice what's right here. And then once, if I stop, my, hit my stop button, the start condition, the start bit will drop out and then stop anything that's going on. So it serves that purpose. So I could, in theory, put all this, I could put all of this here every time, but this makes it easier. It's like, think of this as paying with a hundred penny and paying with a thousand pennies for, and you're exchanging it for a hundred. I don't want to walk around with a hundred pennies all the time, but a hundred dollar bill is much easier. And that's what I'm putting down right here. So I'm saying all of this equals start conditions, and once that met, it's, it stays on through the ceiling. And so now let's watch what happens. So it's retracted. I hit start, and uh, and now hit the it's extending. Hit the limit switch. It retracts. 
uh, and now it hits the retract, and now notice it keeps going back and forth. Whoops. Retract, retract, you know, retract, retract, retract. Boom, it's going to keep on going until I, and I kind of just stopped it right there. Because now we're in, and so right now, say someone hit a limit switch, now we're in no man's land. Well, this is where I hit my stop button. My start conditions are out. But right now, my thing is retracted. Notice, and here's my jogging get out of limbo free button. And notice it won't let me go here because I have that it's not retracted thing. So, you know, and here's my uh, offset for my ceiling. So, but say we are in no man's land. So now I'm in no man's land. If I want to home it, home, 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 home. It's back to start. It's back to the start. So now I can hit start. And now it's going to get off the return limit switch and extend. Oops. You know, and if you if you want to, here's another thing. If you want to, you could put this over here. You can put in a, a not bit. And this is what I might do for a second. Hold on. Um, just because we're getting lazy with my uh, commands. No, that's right there. No, sorry. Um, but notice now everything is automatic. I just hit one push button and it's going to recycle back and forth, back and forth. Hit the limit switch, start the next sequence. Hit the limit switch, start the next sequence. Hit the no boom, 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 boom. And if you notice in an automated system, it's an input. So initially I hit the first input. It engages the start condition logic and that extends the solenoid until it hits the next input, which then engages the logic that goes to the next that so on and so forth so let me turn off that toggle bit and now i can you know toggle the start you know toggle that and boom 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 all right this gets a little bit harder it's easier if you have hardware but i'm trying to make my life easier for you and now i extend boom it's off of that now it's retracting back off of that let me switch extended it's going back it's retracted it's extending it's extended and so on and so forth until i hit the stop button okay so that's an automatic now there's one other little wrinkle that you could throw in so that's forcing automatic every time maybe i want to have a a automatic selector switch that's manual or automatic and then do this well, this looks that looks like this. Once again, I have my my stop get my my conditions in, inside the ceiling that only need to be met once. These are my conditions that need to be met the whole time. So, um, and notice I've added a automatic selector switch. Some of you, when we've done this before, struggled because I kept trying to relate to you so we don't always have to have a a, a a switch that says automatic and manual in our logic it's automatic and not automatic so we have automatic and not automatic which if it's not automatic it's manual and all we did here was put the auto in to that start bit logic. And there's my start bit that my retract solenoid and extend LS just like before. Okay. And then we added a manual selection with a jog. So it's just like before with a homing jog, but this way we're only going to extend that one or retract that one so if it's an automatic we can't use these jog buttons and it's not going to get in the way of anything it otherwise it's going to work exactly the same way and just show you let me clear off the drawing so toggle the automatic toggle my stop so everything is good hit my start conditions but uh now i'm back retract i want to toggle these so extend it 
So extend, and you can see it's working the same way. I just got to go back and forth between these two limit switches. Boom, back and forth. So now let's just say I am in limbo because I hit stop. Everything stopped. I need to jog uh, something back or forward. So let me now toggle my automatic. So now I'm in manual mode, and now I can extend my jog. And you can see it's, it's extended out until it's totally extended. Okay? And now if I want things to start from back at that point, I switch it back into manual, undo my stop button, hit start, or it won't let me go because it's there. But in theory, you know, that's how I get things back in order. Um, so say I've retracted it back, now I hit start. But this is meant to set up to retract or extend. And notice it's only extending when I'm basically keeping that bit on or holding it. That's a jog leg. And you can see I bypass this and it's a, it's a jog. Now, I put an e-stop in here, but if I put a stop on one of these little rungs, I can create a halt. So it will keep going, but it will pick up at the last step that I stopped at. Um, that's something else to think about as well. So if I just put a, a second stop bit in here, I'm gonna call it halt. And put this on there. And so now it's in automatic, so I want to keep it in automatic. I hit my start button, and oops, let me make it make that live. So now it's extending, retracting. Um, and so now, if I want to stop it, I can hit stop, and now everything stops, and then it can be kicked back on once things. It, it, so there's that halt. So now if I want to say it's in no man's land, let me just so it's a no man's land. No, I gotta drop that out. But yeah, that's the idea. If you put it that if you put you put a halt in to stop it and then do some other things too. So you can get creative with this. I probably should have went that way. It's been a long day and I'm not thinking, but you know, the idea is think about jogging, think about what needs to be there. Um uh, and think about, and this is how uh, to give you some tricks. Initial condi conditions once inside the ceiling, everything always need to be true out here. And then I can use a start bit to power everything on. I can then use a bypass around my automatic section to create a, uh, a jogging setup. Okay. Thank you for your time. I hope this was kind of helpful.